Do you know what this is? It's a snare, and poachers use it to catch rabbits. They fix this stick into the ground just in front of the rabbit's warren, and when the rabbit comes out, it gets caught in here. The noose tightens, and the rabbit is trapped. Never set one of these yourself and leave it, as it can cause real suffering to an animal. Maybe you don't like the idea of people catching and killing animals like rabbits, especially if you have a pet rabbit at home or at school. But 200 years ago, they were the only meat some people could get. I'm told they taste delicious. Rabbits were also a terrible nuisance, constantly eating the farmer's crops. So the farmers wanted to get rid of the rabbits, and the farm workers wanted to eat them. But towards the end of the 18th century, neither the farmers nor their workers were allowed to kill them. Killing wild animals was hunting, and according to English law, hunting was only for landowners. No one else was allowed to do it. And landowners were often very keen on hunting. They didn't want anyone else killing the birds and small animals, or even disturbing them, because that would mean they were less to hunt. The working families were no longer allowed into the woods to gather dead sticks for their fires, and poaching had become a serious matter. Guns were being set up to shoot the poachers. This is the sort of thing, it's called a spring gun. Wires come from the trigger and they stretch just above the ground. Now, if you're moving along in the dark and you catch one of these wires, it pulls the gun round towards you and fires. This one's quite safe, it's not loaded. When it is loaded, it fires lead pellets and small stones. This thing is far more dangerous. It's called a man trap, and it was another way of catching poachers. Watch what happens when I poke a stick in it. I wouldn't like to step into that, would you? And yet it was still hard to persuade people to stop going into the wood to take firewood and small animals like they'd always done.
My, that smells good, Mrs. Arden. What kind of a stew would that be, then? It's, uh, it's never rabbit stew, sir. <laughs> never rabbit stew, eh? I never heard of that. <laughs> be Tom around? Yeah, he's around here somewhere. Is he, is he not in the garden? Tom? Tommy's Master Roger's here to see you. Is it work you have for us then, sir? Hi, Bessie. I'll be needing... Ah, Tom. I was just saying to Bessie, I'll be needing some extra men to help with freshen the corn. Huh. Well, bring out the ale, Bessie. Well, that's good news for I, sir. I'll be needing work to get me through the winter. <laughs> You're not intended to make that work last all winter, Tom Harton. I want that corn to market for a few other folk while the price is high. So, it's start tomorrow <laughs> and work like the devil for six weeks. Now, let's drink to that. What's the matter with your hand? I caught it on a harrow. It's nothing. It'll only take a week or so. Tom, you can't thresh corn till you can hold the flail. It'll be better in a couple of weeks. I can't wait you a couple of weeks. No, we must, we must start tomorrow and you come along when you're better. <laughs> In the meantime, I advise you to stop eating never rabbit stew. Picking rabbits is poaching, Tom. No, it ain't. We're not real poaching. I know that, but the law and Lord Long would take a different view. And long was men are out putting spring guns and man traps in the woods to protect his partridge shooting. <laughs> you don't want to uh, hurt a foot as well as your hand, eh? <laughs> ah, well, good day to you both. Damn! Man traps, eh? I never thought it would come to that. Ellie's up there now, gathering firewood. I'll go and fetch her back. Oh, Ellie. I'm glad you're back. Did you see your father? No. Did you get the wood? There's no wood for us. We got to buy wood now. Yes, Ellie. The men are putting up a fence. They said there were traps set now and guns. We can't keep off the woods for good. Miss Henwood said it was dangerous for us now. Told me to tell you and father. But Sarah says the men won't always be there. She says we'll go back and get all the wood we want. We just have to be careful. It will be all right, Mother. You'll see. What, Ellie? Me and Sarah. We'll go back when the men ain't there. We'll get the wood, somehow. No, Ellie! You will not! So, Tom Martin, caught you in the end, didn't we, eh? Come on, Ellie. Sun's up. I come to search your house. What do you mean? What right have you? Every right. Every right since your husband was caught poaching on Will Rogers' farm. Tom? Aye, Tom Harton, caught in his own trap. Where is he? Oh, I'll be up at the manor by now. All I need is a little more evidence so that the square can make a real example of it. Where does he keep the wire for his traps? Where does he keep those neck shoot men for him? What about it, Mrs. Harton, eh? What wire? What nets? Oh, well. It'll be hard times ahead for you all. No food in the house, no fire in the grate, no more wood from the cops. Ah. Now I have all 
mine. I can leave you in peace. You give me those nets. Oh, no, you, you don't. You oh, I can chain lock you, Hartens. Your man goes up before the squire this very morning. God help him. And you. Oh! Mother! Mother! Oh, Ellie! What is to become of us? All the winter ahead and now this. Look, I must go up to the manor and find out what's happened to your father. Well, you stay in, Ellie. Stay here. Do you understand? Oh. Ellie! In you come. You're not you, woman. Go away. Take your hands off me. Let her in, Goldberg. Give her a seat. Martin, must I'm very sorry to see you here in these circumstances. We're only a rabbit. You set a snare on my land. It was common land before. But not now. It takes a long time to make this understood. Here it was a long time understood. We village folk could trap the rabbits and hares. It was part of our living. We can't afford meat else. That's not my business, Harden. It is my business to see that the law is obeyed. Now, you're a strong and willing man. You worked well before. <laughs> I need men myself to keep the woods for me and to build those fences and hedges. Any more to go up yet? Uh, well. As this is your first offence, I, I'm disposed to be lenient with you. I don't want I... your kindness. I want my rights. You have your rights within the law, as well you know. But you do not have the right to break the law. Now, what rights? You do realise that I could have you in prison for six months. Tom? And if you're brought up before me again, it could be a year and a whipping. Why do you treat me like a criminal? Yes, I take vermin from the land, but I don't touch a partridge, I don't touch a deer's. Now, if your law can't see the difference, it's a bad law. It's the law of the land, Harton, and it always has been. And now, it must be enforced. So what is it, Golford? Oh, there's been an accident, my lord, in the woods. One of the village girls. We did warn them. Shot by a spring gun. Hey! hey! Well, no, you damn you, Red Pardon! This is a court of law! He's harmed by God. Be silent, man. Be silent. And say something you'll regret. Now, you listen very carefully. Uh, I shall dismiss this hearing, as this is the first offence, and you know, in view of the circumstances. Do we know the name of the girl? Yeah, not yet, my lord, no. Oh, oh. No. You better go, Hun. Oh, go on, man. Go! She's gone. I know it. She's dead. I told her not to go, Tom. I did. I did. We don't know yet for sure. I do. I know. Oh. Oh. Ellie. It was Sarah. Oh, God, Ellie. I thought it was you, love. I thought it was you. But Sarah. I know, love, but you're here. Let me take that in first. God damn them all. 
I'll not take this placidly now. I'll never give in. They done for us, that's what they think. I'll show them different. Tom? Goldford, I'll have him first. Longwood's barns bursting with corn. I'll burn his barns, he'll learn. I'll fire his ricks for him. Don't, Tom, don't. He's our Ellie, look. He's our Ellie. Things are bad enough as they are. Winter's coming. I can feel the cold already. How are we going to live through all this cold? What are we going to do? In the years that followed, hungry men did secretly set fire to barns and hayricks, but that didn't change anything. More and more people found that their old way of life in the countryside was being destroyed and began to think about finding work in a town instead. Thank mm -hmm. you. 